Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we have a very huge update to discuss in the world of iOS as well as jailbreaking. As I predicted yesterday, Apple has seeded iOS 9.3.2 to the general public. So yes, as of recording this video, 9.3.2 is the latest firmware, which of course has exceeded iOS 9.3.1, the first update to iOS 9.3, the firmware that brought us Night Shift and a number of other new features that we weren't even really expecting inside of iOS 9. So we're going to get into what iOS 9.3.2 brings to the table. For those of you who are only interested in the jailbreak aspect of this video, down below in the more info, there will actually be a a table of contents that will allow you to skip to whichever section or sections most interest you. All right, with that said, let's get into 9.3.2 as an update first. So as you can see, here's a quick screenshot of what those of you who are not jailbroken will likely start to see soon, a software update for iOS 9.3.2. So let's go ahead and swipe over here to the change log, or at least the change log as reported by Apple in their OTA or over the year update section. So it says, quote, iOS 9.3.2 fixes bugs and improvements of the security of your iPhone or iPad. This update fixes an issue where some Bluetooth accessories could experience audio quality issues when paired to iPhone SE, fixes an issue where looking up dictionary definitions could fail, addresses an issue that prevented typing email addresses when using the Japanese kana, and I'm sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly, keyboard in mail and messages fixes an issue for voiceover users using the Alex voice where the device switches to a different voice to announce punctuation or spaces and fixes an issue that prevented MDM server from installing custom B2P apps. So MDM stands for multi-device management. That's what iOS 9.3.2 fixes, but does it actually offer anything new besides what we have there inside of that changelog? I mean, not really really, other than addressing that minor game center complication that I've talked to you guys about in previous beta update videos, where game center could, for some users, completely fail, not even load, and when game center elements inside of select games would also cause those games to crash completely. That apparently has been fixed in 9.3.2, as well as a complication where users could not toggle on Night Shift, one of the primary selling points of iOS 9.3, and the iOS 9 low power mode simultaneously. Now they can inside of iOS 9.3.2. So that's some great news, right? Yes, well, it doesn't end there. See, iOS 9.3.2 is very important from a jailbreak standpoint as well. As I've detailed previously a number of times in my update videos, definitely check out those. I will have them linked on your screens right now so you can get even more into depth and see why 9.3.2 is so important. It's almost certainly the firmware that jailbreak developers are targeting and that they've been been waiting for. Remember, we've been without a jailbreak for quite some time, aside from the surprise jailbreak released by Pangu for iOS 9.1 that utilized a different exploit that they didn't even discover. Remember, again, that's why we received a jailbreak for 9.1 and not the latest public firmware at the time. So Pangu could focus their attention on iOS 9.3.x, which they've been doing for some time now. So, of course, for a recap, we have two jailbreak development teams on the scene. We have Pangu as well as Taiji. Pangu has released the last two jailbreak utilities, and Taiji, for those of you who don't know, was very prominent on the scene for iOS 8.x. They not only jailbroke iOS 8.1.x, but also 8.3 and 8.4. Speaking of which, today's situation is very much similar to that of iOS 8.3 and 8.4, because those were basically considered the same firmware. 8.4 was merely introduced to add Apple Music support. But see, iOS 9.3.2 will likely be one of the last iOS 9 updates before we receive iOS 10 this fall. Apple has already started to taper off development of iOS 9 and divert their attention and efforts to iOS 10, which will be revealed in less than a month at Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference. They'll also see the first beta iteration of iOS 10. I'm really excited for that, not only to see the new direction that Apple is going to go with iOS 10, but also 
also because of what it means for jailbreaking. Remember, Apple is not going to spend as much time on iOS 9, so this is the perfect opportunity for jailbreak developers to target iOS 9.3.x. It seems like Apple has finally started to settle down after the whirlwind of public and beta updates that have ensued since the last 9.0.x jailbreak from Pangu was patched. As I mentioned before, iOS 9.3 brought new features to the table that we didn't even expect inside of iOS 9 and that most thought would be attributed to iOS 10. And that in itself brought some complications to the world of iOS and to the ecosystem in general. Apple has been cleaning up since then with iOS 9.3.1 and now 9.3.2 and hopefully we have a stable enough version for jailbreak developers to feel confident in releasing a new utility. Because remember, even though they may already have a complete jailbreak, they won't release it until they feel like it's the opportune moment to do so. Because remember, jailbreak utilities take so long to create. They take hundreds of hours. And if Apple is just going to release another firmware anyway, and they have one planned, then they can just bake in a fix like that. It's so easy for Apple. Remember, jailbreak developers are definitely the underdogs in this situation. So they want to make sure that jailbreaks last for as long as possible, like Taiji did last year with iOS 8.3 and 8.4. Apple didn't fix it immediately, while they did eventually with 8.4.1. They could have patched it sooner if Taiji had rushed the jailbreak for 8.2. So that's the jailbreaker's mindset right now, that they won't rush to patch it because they're going to be focused on iOS 10. It's a solid move, it makes sense, and that's what we're going to see in the world of jailbreaking, and hopefully the community will once again start to flourish. I just want to remind you guys that there's no need for toxicity. Every single year this kind of thing happens, and every year people spout that this is the end of jailbreak, and again, just promote that toxic attitude in general. Here's a quick screenshot I posted out on Instagram from 2013, an individual on Mac Rumors forums claiming that iOS 7 is the end of jailbreaking and that it's pretty much dead. Well, guess what? Of course, in retrospect, we received an iOS 7 jailbreak and of course, multiple iOS 8 jailbreaks and even iOS 9 jailbreaks for 9.0.x and 9.1. So, this is not the end. It will almost never be the end of jailbreaking. As long as there's a will, there's going to be a way. Every new feature that Apple introduces inside of iOS means more potential room for exploitation. And yes, while iOS 9 did make it harder with Apple's rootless security efforts, it of course was not impossible because we've received two jailbreak utilities since then. This doesn't mean that jailbreak developers have been defeated, just that they're waiting for the right time to strike as any individual who's familiar with strategy would do. So I hope you guys liked this video, just letting you know what's going on in the world of jailbreaking. Remember, my job is to keep you updated, analyze the situation, and tell you kind of what we can expect. Remember, the situation is dynamic, not static. So of course, new developments could come up that may impact the release of the jailbreak as they've done this time with the iOS 9.3.x utility. Keep that in mind. And two other quick things while I have you guys here in this video. As for an expected release timeframe of a new jailbreak utility, in the past, jailbreaks have been issued one to two weeks following the firmware's release that they're actually targeting. So iOS 9.3.2 was issued today, May 16th, 2016. It is definitely conceivable that two weeks from now, we will already have a jailbreak. So keep that in mind. Of course, though, as I've said, anything could come up and change that, but that's what we're hoping for and that's what we're predicting right now. Also, as for updating to iOS 9.3.2, should you do it? Really, that depends on you and your preferences. See, I'm not going to give you guys advice of whether you should or should not update. Just note that you should be happy wherever you're at. And once a jailbreak utility is released, then you can feel 100% safe to update. So my advice is to stay where you're at unless you absolutely need the features introduced by iOS 9.3.x. So maybe you're on iOS 9.2.x and you really want the features introduced by iOS 9.3.x, then you can do so, of course, because we do expect a jailbreak for 9.3.x. Remember that situation with iOS 9.1 and its surprise jailbreak was just that, a surprise. We don't expect anything like that to happen this time around, but if you wanna err on the side of caution, stay where you are, wait until a jailbreak is released, and then update. That's probably the best move.
Remember, I hope you guys liked this video, found it helpful. Don't forget to check out jailbreakandhacks.com, my brand new website. I'm going to keep you fully updated and informed there, just like I do here on my YouTube channel. So be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. That way you'll be completely notified. And if you want even more updates, such as when I'm working on and releasing new videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time. This is ICU, signing out. Join the iCrack Your Advice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.